Hi everybody! Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to deploy a MemSQL cluster with our new installation interface. This interface sits on top of our existing management tool called MemSQL Toolbox. As you can see, this is the first page of the user interface. Before this point, I've already gone ahead and installed MemSQL packages from our documentation. And I've also run the command, which serves me the link to the user interface, which is memsql-deploy UI. This first page of the user interface just summarizes our system requirements, which include some recommendations around memory, ports, and user privileges. We recommend you review these before installing. And you can also click Learn More to go to a link to our documentation that describes more about our requirements and why we have them. Now, the first step of the installation process is going to be to distinguish between whether you're doing an online or offline installation. In this case, the machines I'm installing with have internet access, so I'm going to choose the online installation process. Then you're going to enter your license key. Now, this could be an enterprise license, or maybe you're using the free tier. And you could get your license from the customer portal at portal.memsql.com. The next step is to choose what version you want to install. There's a drop down that shows all the versions, 6, 7, or higher but I'm going to choose the latest version, 7.1.2. Now we're actually going to provision the hosts that you are going to install MSQL for. Now I have three machines running in EC2, and my plan is to install a master aggregator and two leaves. First, I'm going to indicate which hosts that I'm going to install MSQL on. Now this first host I'm inputting, you can see there's a local host checkbox. This is the host that I'm running MSQL toolbox on and how I'm serving the UI. This is also what I'm calling my primary deployment machine. This is where I'm installing all the packages on, and it's going to be the master aggregator in my cluster. I'm also going to input the other two hosts that I plan to be my MSQL leaves. Great, and as you can see, the next step is to input your SSH credentials. Now, in this case, the SSH key is the same across all my hosts, so I'm going to keep this checkbox checked and the username is EC2 user. The SSH key lives on my primary deployment machine or my local host. And now I'm ready to provision. The next step is to actually configure some additional cluster details as well as your nodes. So first it's going to ask you for a super user password, which is the password that you're going to use to access all your nodes in the cluster. Essentially, it's a distributed super user password. And by default, it's root. I'm going to input a short password here for testing purposes. I'm going to keep this box checked because we strongly recommend that you keep high availability. And the next step is to actually determine which nodes you're going to be running on each host. So in this case, I have three nodes, and I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to actually change this into a leaf and remove one of the leaves from this host. That's because I want to make sure that we're benefiting from high availability. If we had both leaves on one host, then we might not benefit from high availability in case of a machine failure. Note that we typically recommend that clusters have child aggregators, but for testing purposes, I'm going to omit it. So as you can see, I have three hosts, and one of them is a master aggregator, and two of them are leaves. This is a confirmation page. It shows you what you configured. You can always go back and change something if you see a mistake. And as you can see, it shows your license, your version, and all of your host and node details. Note that this page also shows a YAML view. Under the hood, what this user interface is doing is it's creating a YAML file that you can always use and save and deploy with future clusters. There is another deployment method you can use that actually takes in a YAML file argument. But this UI is definitely much easier to use as compared to the command line. Now you're, we're going to deploy our cluster. As you can see, first it's making an SSH connection into each of our nodes. It's registered the hosts, and it's starting to install MemSQL. This should only take a few minutes. Great, and it's complete. The completion page has, has a couple of handy tools. It gives you some information on how you can connect from the command line. It gives you a summary of the output, which includes a list of all your nodes and some details about them. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to connect to MemSQL Studio. 
In this box, you want to put the location of where Studio is running. In this case, Studio is running on my primary deployment machine. So I'm going to copy that host in from EC2. And the port of Studio is always 8080. This information autofills based on some host information, and I'm going to call this test cluster. And now I can connect. This will take me to the Studio homepage, which still requires credentials, which is going to be the same as the database credentials. In this case, I haven't created any database users, but I'm going to log in with the distributed super user password that we created during the installation. And there you have it. You've created a cluster, and now you've connected it to Studio. You can use for management and monitoring of this cluster. You can go to the SQL editor and start loading data using our tooltips here and running queries. We hope this UI makes it really easy to get a cluster up and running, start loading data, and querying away. Thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoy using this tool.